All right, let's bring in a former National Security Council Chief of Staff, now Vice Chair of America First Policy Institute's Center for American Security, Fred Flights. Fred, a lot of fear now, at least here uh, in the United States, about what's happening at the Zaporizhia power plant. Take a listen to uh, Ned Price at State Department two days ago. Russia has engaged in a number of false flag operations, uh, and typically what they have done, uh, and what they have done over the years now, going back for quite some time, uh, is to level statements uh, along these lines to accuse others of planning or conducting uh, the types of operations that they have either undertaken or plan to undertake. What do you make of that? Well, this is a big problem in this crisis. Uh, Russia is firing from this nuclear plant against the Ukrainians, knowing they'll be reluctant to fire back. It looks like they have fired back and hit some non-strategic areas. This really is playing with fire. It, at, at, right now, that there doesn't look like there's any prospect of a meltdown or a nuclear disaster. But this kind of thing shouldn't be going on. And the Russians are prepared to make it worse by disconnecting this nuclear plant from areas that serve the Ukrainian government-controlled areas and diverting the power to Russian-controlled areas. So this is a problem I think is going to get worse. Um, is the situation, when you talk about the prospect of a nuclear disaster, is that relatively stable, or is that could that turn on a dime? It looks like it's stable. The problem is the International Atomic Energy Agency can't get its experts in there to assess the plant because of the conflict. Now, you were, uh, the report a moment ago said that the Russians are going to provide some way to get, let these experts in. That hasn't happened yet, and uh, we know the Russians don't tend to honor their agreements. Um, I want to get your take your temperature on China versus Taiwan, increasing provocations. The Chinese government has basically encircled the island now with aircraft, with, with ships. Um, take a listen again to Ned Price. want to get your response. The aggressive maneuvers and military operations that we saw in the aftermath of the speaker's visit uh, was nothing more than a pretext for the PRC to continue taking aim at the cross-strait status quo that has been at the crux of peace and security and stability uh, across the Taiwan Strait for some 40 years. So basically, the State Department, they're making the case that Speaker Nancy Pelosi's trip to the region, which fired up a lot of this, didn't really have an impact. This could have happened either way. Do you agree with that? Well, look, the Pelosi visit was handled very badly. No one should have known about this until she landed in Taipei. The fact that the White House leaked their objections to the trip in advance, the president uh, said that the Pentagon objected to it. This stirred up the situation much more than it had to be. I think if it had been handled discreetly, none of this would have happened. And I don't think Americans understand how much tensions have increased with Taiwan, how there now are constant military and air exercises in the Strait of Taiwan, that ballistic missiles were fired over the island country for the first time ever. And experts are now openly talking about the possibility of an invasion by 2025. It's a very serious situation. China and Russia have kind of jump-started this new, whatever you want to call it, friendship, alliance, partnership. Uh, it got underway at least publicly, as far as we know, when she asked Putin to delay invading Ukraine so that it wouldn't negatively impact the Beijing Olympics, and looks like Putin accommodated that insane request. Now we're at a point where China's announcing they're going to send troops to Russia. Uh, it seems to have escalated very quickly. Well, you know, I hate to say it all comes down to Trump, but it really does. None of this was happening under President Trump. We had competent foreign policy. We had adversaries who respected and feared the United States. The reason the Russians and the Chinese are collaborating right now is because they perceive American weakness. The Chinese see what's happening in Ukraine. The Chinese see extremely weak and incompetent policy on, on, on Taiwan. We see the National Security Advisor and the Secretary of State not meeting with or communicating with their counterparts. Jillian, this is, not, this is foreign policy malpractice, and I'm, I'm really worried where this is going. Fred, we got to leave it there. Um, thanks for sharing your perspective with us today. We appreciate it. Good to be here. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.